peace be with you. And with your spirit. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Michelle. Thank you for arranging the blue sky and the sunshine. It's great to be back here in Rushton to celebrate our faith. You know that whenever we come together at Eucharist, it's, it's such a blessing for all of us. But tonight, tonight we are particularly graced because of these, your sons and daughters standing before us, who will soon be empowered by God's spirit to live their lives and witness to Jesus. We know that too often we fail in our own efforts to give witness to Christ's love. And so for a moment now, as we begin to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we, we pause for just a moment. We ask our God for his pardon, for his strength. You came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> sanctify your universal church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of your spirit across the face of the earth, so that your divine grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. 
Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in different tongues, as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? Were our Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans, and the Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. creatures. May the glory of the Lord endure you forever. May the Lord be glad in his works. Pleasing to him be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit, and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manif manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all parts of the body, though many, are, are one body, so also Christ. For one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. 
On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Jory, are you okay over there? I got it under Good evening, everybody. I am so happy to see you all here tonight. Uh, nights like this makes me a, a very proud pastor. Um, you're a proud pastor. Um, I'm very proud tonight because um, these 14 men and women are going to become full members of the church tonight. And uh, I look so forward to, uh, to their service here in our parishes and in, in the community and later in the world when, um, when they graduate from high school and college and, or whatever. Um, as, as Christian men and women. Um, I welcome your moms and dads, the first teachers of the, of the faith to you. Um, I welcome the, da the Dana family tonight, um, who's, um, the Mass is offered for their, to, for, for their family tonight. And um, I, I'd like to thank uh, Lori and, and uh, Aaron, uh, your teachers, um, who worked very hard with you all year long, praying with you and forming you and getting you getting ready for this evening. And Lori, in a special way tonight, we're praying for you and your, and your family as, uh, as you're mourning the loss of, of your dad and uh, whose funeral is tomorrow. And uh, our hearts go out to all of you and we're, we're mourning with you. And uh, Bishop, we especially welcome you. It's so great to have you back here. <laughs> Bless you, Mary And um, it's, it's my honor to, to present to you these, these men and women, 14 men and women who I know are, are ready uh, for this very special sacrament of the church. Thank you, Father. Like I said, it's great, great to be back here with you all, especially on this, this special occasion. A spider. A spider built his web in a barn high among the rafters, where he started by spinning a long, slender thread attached to the end of one of the beams. And with this thread still attached to him, the spider jumped off the beam and spun out more thread on his way down to about where he wanted the center of his web to be. From the center, he then spun out more threads, almost like, um, like spokes on a wheel. And attaching each end of one of them to the walls, the rafters, and other places. Well, finally, he had an exquisitely made web that helped him catch a whole lot of fine, juicy flies. But the spider grew fat and lazy. One day, while admiring the web he had spun, he noticed that long, fine thread he had first spun from the top beam, and, and he said, I wonder what that's there for. I can't imagine why I ever put it there in the first place. I mean, it doesn't catch any flies. And so he broke it. And as a result, the whole wonderful web collapsed. The spider had forgotten that the one thread, the link to the strongest beam above, supported the whole web. You see, the spider had forgotten its lifeline. And the same thing can happen 
to you and to me. You know, we can get so wrapped up in our own very busy little worlds and we forget the source of absolutely everything that we have and that we are. In that first Pentecost event, God wanted to make sure that his closest followers wouldn't forget what he had done. So we heard from the Acts of the Apostles noise like a strong driving wind and tongues as of fire rested on each of their heads in that upper room. They wouldn't forget the event given such pyrotechnics. Jesus had promised them that he wouldn't leave them alone. He would send him his Holy Spirit to help them along the way to stay closer to Jesus. God's Spirit wouldn't let them forget Jesus. Again, for you and for me, sometimes we forget. Does anybody here know who Dave Thomas was? Ever heard Dave Thomas? He was the founder of Wendy's hamburger chain. He was adopted as a baby, and he never knew his biological mother. He lost his adoptive mother when he was five, and then two stepmothers by the age of ten. A grandmother took him in, and she tried to instill within him two lessons. She told him over and over, hard work is good for the soul. And don't cut corners. Now, after I had confirmation last week in one of the um, parishes, one of the newly confirmed came up to me and said, Bishop, I suppose that's why they have square hamburgers and Wendy's. <laughs> Don't cut corners. <laughs> Thomas was shuffled from city to city with his father, living in dirty rooming houses and in dingy trailers. He worked as a paper boy and as a delivery boy for a grocery store. He always wanted to own a restaurant. And he founded Wendy's back in 1969 because of the simple fact that he wanted jobs for his five kids. Within 10 years, there were 1,000 Wendy's restaurants. Today, there are more than 6,000. As a very generous man, he came upon another life ambition, to build homes for foster children. He was an orphan. And he never forgot. He spent millions on a specific mission. To adopt children in foster homes, give them love and care, and find them work for life. Thomas never forgot his roots. And he did something about it. Well, my sisters and brothers, in just a few minutes, you will be gifted with God's spirit in a very powerful way as you are confirmed in the Catholic faith. You will be empowered with the capability of making your personal thanksgiving to God, not forgetting how truly blessed you have been. In fact, you've shared with me already some ways in which you've done that through community service. You know how much you have been blessed. And so you express your thanksgiving in your outreach to others. Whether it's eating at harvest, I mean serving at harvest dinners. <laughs> helping out kids in school. Helping out at the community center. Ways of expressing gratitude not forgetting 
how you're blessed. And as I mentioned to you before Mass, those are sort of like one-time things that had to check off the list in order to be confirmed. Well, tonight you are standing before your family and friends saying no longer these one-time projects. But it is an attitude of gratitude that you will live the rest of your life. A lifetime project of always, always, always looking for opportunities to extend yourself to others in service because you do not forget how much you have been blessed. I remember last year I was doing confirmation in another small parish up here in the North Country and I was sharing um, with one of the catechists. We were talking about community service projects and and he was just lamenting the fact that today, in our small community, so very, very few people volunteer. He was a volunteer fireman. That's why I was glad to hear somebody here is involved in firemen. And he says, you know, we need them when we have the emergency, but we're forgotten any other time of the year. We can't get anybody to volunteer. We're so concerned about making our lives happy and content that we forget what's on the other side of our door in our homes. Now the odds are we're probably not old enough to be involved in a lot of the community service. But we look for opportunities, whether it's the firemen, whether it's the rotary, whether it's the Knights of Columbus, Catholic Daughters, Altar Rosary, whether it's serving at the altar, whether it's reading. We look for opportunities to give ourselves because we know we have been blessed. And we don't forget. Another way that we do that is precisely what we're doing now. We come together at least each week to celebrate Holy Eucharist. The very word Eucharist means Thanksgiving. And at every Mass, Father stands at that altar. He voices the words of Christ himself. And sa who says, do this in memory of me. And so we do. Nourished by word and sacrament, giving thanks to God for our blessings. Another way that we show and we know that we are blessed is by never tire of learning more and more about our faith. Now, I know not this class, but some classes. You know, we have the attitude, thank God I'm confirmed, no more religion. I remember I had that attitude. And you can see where it got me. <laughs> My folks won, thank God. Each and every day of our lives, God is revealing something new about himself and his love for us. And we need to always be alert to that revelation by God through daily prayer and through learning more and more about our Catholic faith. Sadly today, adults will ask other adult, Catholic adults, why do you Catholics do this? Or why do you Catholics believe that? And we shy away from answering because, number one, we don't know the answer. Or number two, the answer we learned or something we learned as kids. And that does not satisfy an adult faith. And so as our parish provides us with opportunities for Bible study or adult faith formation, we all, no matter what age, how young or old we are, must participate and those opportunities to learn more about our faith. You see, only you can be grateful. And no one can live your faith for you. Only you can say thank you by not forgetting your blessings. There was a, a Catholic man who would always say to his wife on Sunday mornings, Sweetheart, you, you can go to Mass for the two of us. But one night, he dreamed that he and his wife died and came together to heaven's gate. St. Peter asked, You are Mr. and Mrs. Smith? The couple nodded their heads. St. Peter said, Well, um, Mrs. Smith, you can come in for the two of you. You see, we are responsible 
for our own faith. We must tend to it. We must nurture it. We cannot get by on the coattails of our parents, our godparents, or our grandparents' faith. That's why it's so important that as our diocese has embarked upon an exciting mission of creating a culture of vocations, of strengthening faith formation and family life, and of building parishes with living stones, your participation is critical. As our diocesan plans begin to get underway in our parishes, you, the newly confirmed, are charged to join the rest of the parish family in participating. When all is said and done, my prayer for you is that you never, never, never forget your lifeline. Candidates, please stand. On the day of Pentecost, the apostles received the Holy Spirit as the Lord had promised. They also received the power of giving the Holy Spirit to others, and so completing the work of baptism. Bishops are successors of the apostles and have this power of giving the Holy Spirit to the baptized, either personally or through the priest they appoint. The gift of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will be a spiritual sign and seal to make you more like Christ and more perfect members of his church. You have already been baptized into Christ, and now you will receive the power of the Spirit and the sign of the cross on your foreheads. You must be witnesses before all the world to Christ's suffering, death, and resurrection. Your way of life should at all times reflect the goodness of Jesus. Be active members of the church, alive in Jesus Christ. Under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, give your lives completely in the service of all. Is it Christ who came not to be served, but to serve? So dear candidates, before you receive the Spirit, I ask you to renew the profession of faith you made in baptism or your parents and godparents made in union with the whole church. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? the Lord, the giver of life, who came upon the apostles of Pentecost and tonight is given to you sacramentally in confirmation. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Candidates, please kneel. My dear sisters and brothers, in baptism, God our Father gave the new birth of eternal life to his chosen sons and daughters. Let us all now pray to our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit to strengthen these, your sons and your daughters, with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. All-powerful God, 
Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and their guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence, through Christ our Lord. You may be seated. Candidates.
My dear friends, let us be one in prayer to God our Father, as we are one in the faith, hope, and love that his Spirit brings. For these sons and daughters of God, now confirmed by the gift of the Spirit, that they give witness to Christ by, li by lives built on faith and love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the parents and godparents of these newly confirmed, who have led them thus far by faith, that by word and example they may continue always to encourage them in following the way of Jesus Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the Holy Church of God, in union with Benedict, our Pope, Terry, our Bishop, and all the bishops, that God, who gathers us together by the Holy Spirit, may help us grow in unity of faith and love until his Son returns in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For men and women of every race and nation, that they may acknowledge the one God as Father, and in the bond of their common heritage, promote the dignity and sanctity of all human life, from conception to natural death, and together seek out his kingdom, which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For an increase of laborers in the Lord's vineyard, that one with the Blessed Virgin Mary, in whose company the apostles received the Holy Spirit, those now discerning their vocations in life, will grow in their ability to recognize the Lord's call and respond with generous hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God our Father, you sent your Holy Spirit upon the apostles and through them and their successors, you give the Spirit to your people. May this work, begun at Pentecost, continue to grow in the hearts of all who believe. We ask this through Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen.
sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all the holy Church. Receive in your mercy, O Lord, the prayers of your servants, and grant that, being conformed more perfectly to your Son, they may grow steadily in bearing witness to him as they share in the memorial of his redemption, by which he gained for us your Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up, the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. sacrifice, 
Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Augustine, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, Terry, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. And your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. But not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And your spirit. Extend that peace to one another. Jesus Thank you very much.
behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
pray. O oh God, who bestowed heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Immediately after our liturgy tonight, uh, we'll, uh, we'll take a group photo uh, of the class and the bishop right here in the church. And then right after the photo, we're going to take the celebration over to our parish center on the Gale Road where we'll have a, a reception and also we'll distribute uh, the, uh, the certificates and the gifts there. So please join us at the, at the parish center um, after Mass and after pictures. Thank you. If I could take just a moment to extend words. First of all, congratulations to our newly confirmed. I want to thank our um, musicians. It's great to be back here. The beautiful music. I want to thank our altar servers. A wonderful team we have here at the altar tonight. Knights of Columbus. Great to have uh, my brother Knights here again. Special word of gratitude to our CCD, to our, our catechist. And a special thank you to our moms and dads. It's not easy raising a family in the faith today. It takes a whole lot of perseverance, a whole lot of faith, and a whole lot of love. You're doing that, we're here tonight. As I mentioned earlier, this is just one stop on the, on the journey of faith and the journey of life. And so certainly uh, we continue to offer you our prayers and our support as you continue to give witness to your faith, to your most prized possession, your sons and daughters. Thanks, moms and dads. Lastly, I want to thank the pastors, St. Augustine's and here at St. Mary's for all your fine pastoral ministry here in the, in the North Country. I'm so very, very grateful for his priestly ministry among all of you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And Almighty God bless you. God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.